Browsing through a Bergdorf's or Nordstrom's, you might not realize that the clothes aren't the only meticulously designed works of art on display. For Ralph Pucci and his team at Ralph Pucci International, the mannequins they create for high-end retailers are vital to creating the right mood for designer collections. Our heroes are Giacometti, Brancusi. We like to do things the touch of the artist. Inspired by everything from 20th century sculpture to modern dance, Mr. Pucci says it's this attention to movement and flow that sets Pucci's mannequins apart. At the Pucci factory in New York City, each mannequin order starts as a piece of clay. Once Mr. Pucci and his designers envision the right look to suit the needs of a client, the idea is brought to life through the work of Pucci's sculptor, Michael Everett. This sculpting process can take anywhere from four to six weeks. What also makes Pucci International different is the way the company has pushed the envelope. When Ralph Pucci started his business in 1976, he experimented by stepping away from the typical ladylike form of mannequins. When a popular aesthetic was Calvin Klein's minimalist approach, Pucci's designs veered in the other direction. We came up with this mannequin, which was the anti-Zen. It was fun, it was humorous, let's not take ourselves too seriously. Teaming up with illustrator Myra Coleman and then later pop artist Kenny Sharp in the 1990s, Pucci's mannequins broke new ground. No one had ever done mannequins like this. So, you know, one eye, they were purple, they were green, they were sort of uh, Jetson-ish. While the designs can range from the fantastical to recreations of supermodels such as Christy Turlington, the manufacturing process hasn't changed much. Once the clay sculpture is finished, it is transformed into plaster and then cast into a fiberglass mold. Once the mold is approved, hundreds of mannequins can be produced from it. This is where the mannequins are sanded. And each mannequin is done by hand, so it's almost old world artisan. Finally, the mannequin is sprayed and finished. So this is the spray booth. Typically, a mannequin would go into the booth and then be sprayed, whether it's a, a flat white finish or a flat black finish. I created this finish back in the early 80s. It's called the gray foundry finish. There's no paint, so this is it. The seam lines are shown. The imperfections are shown, but the imperfections are beautiful. And it's become our most successful finish. It was this unconventional design that enabled the Pucci mannequin business to take off as New York City's downtown scene burst with boundary-pushing iconic fashion and art. This is a mannequin that I did in 1986 with Andre Putman. We created a mannequin for the downtown Barney store. Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, Thierry Mugler, many of the downtown fashion models many of the downtown fashion designers and the uptown department stores all got together and it created this incredible uh, environment, this incredible movement. As retailers continually looked to Mr. Pucci's creations for the right blend of artistic influences and fashion trends, no matter what kind of pose the mannequins strike, it still all begins with an idea and a piece of clay.